What's good guys, welcome back to another video. And if this is your first time here, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified every time I post another video. Hit the like button for me as well. And as you guys can see, we got my boy, Joshua Denier. You guys know him already, but tell, you, tell them a little bit about yourself, bro. Okay, um, yeah, I, I run a TikTok account. I do TikTok apologetics. Um, I'm an apologist. Um, next year, I'll be going to Bible college. Um, I'm studying to be an, um, a pastor or a professor someday. I'll be going to seminary soon. Um, I seek to um, defend God's word, um, you know, and I'll you know, expound on the glory of God and his, you know, the, the amazing grace of his gospel. Um, that's what I want to do. I want to glorify God through the gifts that he's given me. And I'm glad to be here, brother. Yes, sir. And there is a good chance we're going to go to the same college. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. But yeah, and as you guys can see in the title, and as you guys know, we are in a series called What is Calvinism, and this is part four, I believe, that we're going to be tackling the topic of limited atonement. And this is probably the most controversial um, letter in the acronym TULIP, and there's a lot of reasons why, and we're going to tackle that today. The question really is, did God die for everybody? And does the atonement work for every single person? Did Christ's atonement on the cross um, work for every single person? individual and that's what we're going to tackle today so joshua floor is yours yes sir and i'll just like to define what it is let's define what it's not um limited atonement is not ha 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 you're out i'm in or uh, there's some maybe some calvinists who stage cage calvinists that believe that um limited atonement is not that the atonement is only for a small group of people um what limited atonement or definite atonement is that the atonement of jesus christ is effective to whom it was you know given to the the we if you're not a universalist we all agree that the atonement of jesus christ is effective for all but limited for some um to go farther than that is universalism um everybody believes in a limited atonement we the reformed faith just believes in it differently than it's professed in most evangelical churches when we say definite atonement we mean that the atonement of jesus christ was not by chance it is not you have to accept it it's that it was given for the people of god and only for the people of god alone and a passage to support that is matthew 1 i believe um Matthew chapter one, do, 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 do. give me one second. What's it, Matthew? What's the verse where it says his name shall be called Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew means salvation because he will save his people from their sins. I believe it's Luke, but you can, you can find it if you want, but that's, that, that's the verse. Um, the, the okay, okay, I got you, I got you. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. There we go. There we go. Matthew, okay, there we go. Um, she will bear a son and, his, and, his, and, and shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people yeah. not, from their sins. So when we say definite atonement, we say that the atonement of Jesus Christ was only for God's elect. Only for God's elect. Yes, sir. That's like I say, he'll save his people from their sins. It specifies who he is going to save, who is he going to die for. Another place we can find this is in Ephesians. Um, I believe Ephesians chapter 5, where he says to the wives, to the husbands, I mean, no, 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 not even Ephesians chapter four, 5. It's, I think it's Ephesians chapter 4, where he tells the husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church. All right, no, it's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. He says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. So he's telling the husbands to love their wives just like Christ loved the church. And he gave himself up for who? The church. So the atonement is going to only work for who? The church. That's why we call it definite atonement. He actually accomplished something. It's not like Jesus came to die to, to atone for everyone's sins and then everyone, and not everyone's going to go to heaven. That would make Jesus the biggest failure ever. If Jesus, if the atonement worked for everybody, everyone's sins would be paid for and everyone would be going to heaven. 
Now that's universalism. But evangelicals don't believe in universalism. Most evangelicals don't believe in universalism. So that's why um, we say everyone believes in a form of limited atonement. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, um, that's so true. Um, well, let's just go to the Messianic prophecies. To, to deny limited atonement or predestination is to deny all prophecies. Um, the death of Messiah Jesus was prophesied 700 years before it happened. And as, you know, as, as I believe it's Peter, he says that, you know, what his hand predestined, it was the will of the Lord to crush his son. Isaiah 53 says he was pierced for our transgressions, our iniquities. So to say that the atonement of Jesus Christ, Jesus died with a chance of people being saved, that makes Jesus an imperfect savior. But the Bible doesn't describe him that way. Um, Jesus is a perfect savior. He saves perfectly um, from effectual calling, from raising somebody up to new life, to preserving them, and even dying for them. He saves his people, his sheep, perfectly. And we can turn to John chapter 6, verse 35, um, verse 37. Verse 37. Let me know when you're there. All right, good. Um, all that the Father gives me will not will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I've for I've come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. And this is the will of Him who sent me, that I lose nothing that He has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone so that's controversial. We'll get there. Who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Um, so all that the father gives me, all that the father gives me, who are those who get, who all that the father doesn't say that, you know, some is just right here. All that the father has chosen in Jesus Christ, he gives them as a love gift to him, son, son, and he will never cast them out. Who is this talking about? Is this talking about unbelievers? Because it says all that the father gives me, I will take. And I'll never cast them out. This obviously can't be unbelievers. This has to be Jesus' elect. And, you know, just let's follow John's argument because he's going to make the same argument in John chapter 10. I'll tell you the verse right now. Okay, John chapter 10, verse 14. Okay, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that is not of this fold. I must bring them also. And, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay my life down that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority laid down. I have the authority to take it up. This is the charge that I received from my Father. So I am the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. You know, that's Psalm 23, Ezekiel. Um, you, you can read that, those, those books, you know, to, to find out, the, you know, what Jesus does as our shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. So this is intimacy. This, you know, why I love definite atonement is because it makes the atonement intimate. That Jesus literally, in my place condemned, he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood. That Jesus died for me. Not, you know, not, you know, Jesus died. I believe, I'm a post-millennial, so I believe that Jesus died for a lot of people. But it's not that the atonement is just like, it's by chance, no. Um, just as the Father knows me, I just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay I lay my life down for my sheep, for the sheep. What are sheep? Uh, if if we if we go to the first century context, the Jewish people in Jerusalem saw a lot of sheep. We know that shepherds own their flock. That the sheep didn't choose the shepherd; the shepherd chose the sheep. Um, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. And this goes back to the John six. Um, this goes back to the, you know, because there's many passages, many objections that people will bring up. Um, but, you know, it says that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins and not just for our sins, also for the sins of the world. Um, John 3, 16. So Jesus says in John 6, verse 40, for this is the will of my father that everyone, so everyone, everybody thinks everyone, you know, just this is for everybody. Um, but this is, this is the argument Jesus makes. I have other sheep that is not of this fold. Who is he talking about? the Gentiles who would enter that covenant of grace. Not, not, he has other sheep of this fold. Um, where is it? Where is it? 
and I have other sheep of the fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me. I lay, I lay my life down that I may take it up again. He lays his life down for his sheep. And Jesus, Jesus says um, to the Jews in John 10, I'll just 25, I told you and you do not believe that I do my I do that I do in my father's name bear witness to me but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep I mean Jesus basically says to the Jews of his day that he was Jesus was performing miracles um, that's why he says in Matthew that if, 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 if Sodom and Gomorrah would have saw the works that you saw, they would have repented in, in, in sackcloth. Um, he says, you've seen my works. I come in my father's name. My works bear witness to who I am, but you are not believing because you are not among my sheep. We know that faith is a gift. Philippians 129, Ephesians 2, um, repentance is the gift, and it is only given to God's elect. It is not just free, it's like, oh, you know, let me grab faith, let me grab repentance. No, these are things that are given from on high, and they're only given to God's elect. But it's not like we're saying, hey, we're better than you. No, God just chose to, like the previous episode, God has chosen to give grace to others and justice by letting them perish in unbelief. Amen. Amen. And so basically to sum it up, like limited atonement is basically saying this. God chosen before the foundation of the world to save a people. And God commissioned Jesus Christ to go do what his sovereign will had declared for him to do. So he came down and died for the specific people who God chose to save. So if God sent Jesus to die so that salvation could be possible for everyone, like I said before, God is the biggest failure in the Bible. There's this heretic, and I'm yeah. going to just say, there's this heretic, Kenneth Copeland, and he says God is the biggest failure in the Bible, but his explanation is incorrect. Is he, God is not the biggest failure in the Bible. Obviously, I'm not saying that, but if, the, if their view of, of, of uh, predestination and their view of atonement is correct. God's the biggest failure because he's trying to save people, but people are just rejecting him. So that means that their will is more stronger than God's will. Yeah. That's, and that's what you're point. basically saying. That's a, that's contra a contradiction. And Who's sovereign, God or us? Yeah. If, you know, if God is sovereign, how is man free? I love that. Um, but then the, the, let's just, let's just think logically. Um, Paul says, John says that Jesus is the hilasterion, the propitiation for our sins. If mm. Jesus, what does propitiation mean? It means to mm. turn away the anger of God's wrath. If mm. Jesus did that for every single human being that walked on the face of the earth, there's no more wrath to be poured out in hell. It's just, it's just a, if, if, if the Armenian position is correct, if any other position is correct, that it's somehow the Jesus died for you, but you have to accept it. Somehow this atonement is you have to, you have to, you have to accept it. If that is true, then that's a contradiction because if Jesus died for everybody, everybody will go to heaven. That's how people in the first century would have understood the atonement. Um, what does Leviticus says the, oh, when, he, when God sets in place the sacrificial system to replace what he did in Genesis 3? It says they will be forgiven. If everybody is forgiven, there's no need to pour, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no wrath to pour out in hell. And that, that's the contradiction. Um, it's just, it's logical. Um, and everybody believes in a limited atonement unless you're a universalist. But yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just go to objections now. Um, yeah. you, know, based, you know, passages like John 3.16. So John writes, Hutos, Garigapis, and Hotos, Don Cosman, Hosted, Don Huy, and Thamanagani, Hinapas, Hopis, Thuan. So that's important because this says, Thus, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever is Pistuan, active, believing in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the English translation says, whoever believes. But the Greek says, whoever is believing. Believing. Yeah. Whoever who believe, God's elect. And yeah, you, there's there's multiple passages like John 1. You know, He's not the propitiation for our sins. He's just not the propitiation for our sins, but also for the sins of the world. John is specifically writing to a Jewish audience. Jewish people. Jesus is not, Jesus just did not satisfy the wrath of Israel. We know that. 
you know, passages like Romans 11, um, Romans 4, Galatians 3, that, that Gentiles by faith, if they share the same faith as Abraham, they, be, they can become descendants of Abraham and part of that covenant community, not because of nationality, but because of faith, faith, the promise rests on faith. Um, but yeah, brother, I, I want to read one more thing from the Canons of Dort, Article 8. For this was a sovereign council um, and most gracious and purpose of God the Father, that quickening and saving uh, efficiency of the most precious death of his son should extend to all the elect for bestowing upon them, the, them alone the gift of justifying faith. So the, the gift, the atonement of Jesus Christ is only for the elect. And if it's for the elect, so basically... Anybody who, I, I believe, anybody who denies this doctrine, they deny the, the, the Trinitarian gospel, that the, that the Father sends the Son, the Son, the Son, the, the Son ascends, the Son dies for the sins of his people, and then the Son sits at the right hand of the Father, sends the Spirit, and then, as the Canons of Dort says, this is what God does when he sends the Spirit, um, bestowing upon them alone the gift of justifying faith, thereby to bring them infallibly to the salvation, it, is, it was the will of God that Christ, by the blood of his cross, whereby he confirmed the new covenant, should effectually redeem out of every tribe, every tribe, nation, and language, all those and those only who were from eternity chosen to salvation and given to him by the Father, John 6, that he should confer upon them faith, which together with all other saving gifts of the Holy Spirit, he purchased them by his death, should purge them from all sin, both original and actual, whether committed before or after believing, having faithfully preserved them even to the end, should at last bring them the free, free from every spot and blemish to enjoyment of glory in his own presence forever. So you have basically the five points of Calvinism in that one article. Yes, sir. And his door. Um, so yeah, so the atonement of Jesus Christ is only for God's elect. Therefore, when the son sits at the right hand of the father after making purification for sins, he sends the spirit to apply his work and bestowing on them justifying faith. And the spirit is our inheritance and the seal of our righteousness. And God, Christ, will preserve us perfectly. It has nothing to do with our ability to keep salvation. Because if that were so, we would lose it. But yeah, yeah. brother. Yeah. Yeah, bro, that's a great explanation of limited atonement, guys. Um, that's what we had to say about it, and that's what we had to teach about it. Um, and I hope that people will stop straw manning it. Um, you know, just so much people that are doing this, and I see it on TikTok a lot. And I was telling my brother two episodes ago, Elijah Lamb, that there's this grandpa on TikTok, and he's just straw manning us. And I, I hope that this can reach out to him and reach out to others who don't truly understand calvinism but yeah guys and like i said if this is your first time here i encourage you to hit the subscribe button hit the bell to be notified every time i post another video leave a comment of what you want to see who you want to see your favorite tiktokers i'm reaching out to them so we can do some more videos and i got some of them coming on pretty soon in the next couple of weeks um yeah hit the like button for me i love you guys see you guys in the next episode